So, how did this give us this? For that, we have to go back to the mid-1990s. There was lots of plaid flannel shirts, boys had middle parts, and all of the colors were somehow neon. Resident Evil 1 was still in development around 1994-95, and Capcom's golden child, Street Fighter 2, had begun to lose its luster after releasing around five different versions from 1991 to 94. Capcom was struggling financially due to the burden of staffing for more complex games on a brand new generation of consoles, like the PlayStation 1, the Nintendo 64, and the Sega Saturn. Not to mention, video game publishing was an incredibly competitive market. So much so that in the 1980s, many gaming publishers used pseudonyms in in credits of games to help avoid competitors scouting their development staff. Can you even imagine years of your life and hard work on a published piece of media and you don't even get credit? Like you're sitting there trying to convince your mom, yeah, I'm a ball boy. I promise. Like. No one would believe you. It's outrageous. Things had gotten bad enough financially at Capcom that some employees feared the company would shutter. Their CEO, Kenzo Tsuchimoto, even diversified investments in buying some land in Napa Valley, California, over in the good old US of A back in 1990. There were exactly two things that saved Capcom and resulted in the gift of Resident Evil, which in turn saved Capcom. Allow me to explain. We've set the scene. Finance is panicked. Street Fighter 2 is no longer carrying the company. Capcom is looking to eliminate unnecessary expenses and hoping to release the next big game that can get them back on top. The first thing that happens is the CEO I mentioned earlier, Kenzo Tsuchimoto, ends up using his investment property that would later become an amazing winery to help Capcom stay afloat until they can release that next big hit. While this Napa Valley estate doesn't actually start winemaking until 1998, it certainly is a lot more fun to say this is how wine saved Capcom versus this is how land that would soon start to make wine saved Capcom. But I suppose that one is a bit more accurate. Literally, on Capcom's website, Tsuchimoto is still listed as the CEO and right there is the Kenzo Winery in Japan Company Limited. You can't make this stuff up. Regardless, this investment helps keep Capcom afloat for the time being. Now, the other thing that happens is in 1995, Capcom hires an American consulting firm that for the life of me, I could not find the name of. Seriously, folks, if anybody knows it, please tell me in the comments. I want to know. This consulting firm was hired to help Capcom tighten those purse strings and shore up a financially ailing company. They recommended that Capcom cancel Resident Evil, which at this point in late 1995 was mostly complete. The absolute legend Takuro Fujiwara steps in at this point and goes to absolute bat for Resident Evil, despite not having much of a hand in the game up until now, but he believed in the project that strongly. If you want to know more about that story, I've got a card in the corner. The wild thing is, the entire development team didn't really even have high hopes for this game. They saw it as more of a niche for a core group sort of title. Shinji Mikami himself, the director of Resident Evil, wasn't even told his game was almost canceled until like 10 years later. 10 years! So the future winery kept Capcom afloat and this grace period along with a very passionate Fujiwara kept Resident Evil on track and come its release date? In 1996, when Capcom did finally release 
Resident Evil, which again, it anticipated maybe selling 200,000 copies of, it became one of the best-selling games on PlayStation 1, eventually selling over 5 million copies over the course of three versions, and one of the most iconic franchises of all time, cementing Capcom's future and strengthening their catalog. All because a man who bought land in wine country and a man who wanted Capcom to make a scary game believed that creating video games is worth fighting for. Hudoken! All of my sources used for this video are included in the description below. What are your favorite behind the scenes stories of Resident Evil games? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. And help me defeat the algorithm by liking and subscribing if you think I've earned it. Until next time, I'll holler at y'all later. Cut!